सो हेलो एंड वेलकम टू टू डेज लेक्चर ऑन प्रायोरिटी सिक्वेंसिंग ऑफ जॉब्स अंडर द मॉड्यूल ऑफ ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट द लेक्चर इज रिगार्डिंग द प्रायोरिटी सिक्वेंसिंग ऑफ जॉब्स इन द इंडस्ट्री वेयर देर आर मल्टीपल वेराइटी ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स एंड द डिसीजन इज टू बी टेकन दैट विच ऑर्डर टू बी प्रोसेस्ड फर्स्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर आर फोर वेरियंट्स ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट ओके एंड वी आर गेटिंग वेरिएबल ऑर्डर्स फॉर डिफरेंट वेरिएंट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन फर्नीचर इंडस्ट्री देर इज मल्टीपल रेंज ऑफ प्रोडक्ट लाइक बेडरूम फर्नीचर ऑफिस फर्नीचर ओके एंड सिमिलरली द ऑर्डर्स फॉर डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स आर जनरेटेड ऑन डेली बेसिस सो द डिसीजन इज टू बी टेकन that which order should be given a priority or in which sequence the production uh, should be carried out so that our orders are to be fulfilled as per the committed deadline so we will start the lecture the agenda for today's lecture is priority sequencing then what is the criteria for choosing a priority then sequencing rules measures of effectiveness and then we will conclude the lecture with one industrial case so are you ready to go with let's go so what is priority sequencing number of jobs are ever more than the workstation capacity that we all know in the operation management problem it is always about the uh, number of uh, jobs so what is priority sequencing we all know in operations management problem the number of jobs are ever more than the workstation capacity so when one job is processing other is waiting that is but obvious okay so priority sequence rule are applied to all the jobs waiting in the queue so when the workstation becomes vacant next job with highest priority is to be assigned there so the priority sequencing is a systematic procedure for assigning the priorities to the waiting jobs and determining the sequence in which the jobs will be performed so what are the criterias for choosing a sequence the criteria may be the setup cost it may involve the process inventory idle time average time to complete the job average number of jobs waiting in the queue and average time the jobs are late so these are some of the criteria for choosing a sequence definitely we will discuss this criteria after few slides in detail okay so how many priority sequencing rules are there these are some of the rules which are listed so rule number 1 is first come first serve which is a default rule the order which is punched or which is registered early the delivery of that order should be given a highest priority so this rule which is called as the default rule is first come first serve then there is a rule called as shortest processing time so which says that the job having minimum or less processing time should be processed early then there is earliest due date now sometimes in rush orders irrespective of the date of order some priorities or some deadlines are committed by the industry uh, on case to case basis so there there may be a disparity between the date of order and date of delivery so in such case the order or the product having earliest due date should be processed first so that our commitment of the deadline uh, is fulfilled then there is a rule called as longest processing time now it is a quite uh, what we can say dual logic okay if our mind says that if i will complete all the jobs having shortest processing time first then i will have the ample time for the jobs having longer processing time similarly one can think that if the jobs having longer processing time 
should be processed early then there will be no hurry to complete the jobs having shorter processing time then there is one sequencing rule as preferred customer order in which you are uh, processing the jobs as per the customer requirement and there is one more priority sequencing rule called as least slack now we will try to understand this priority sequencing of jobs with the help of this industrial case so i will read it out first a toy manufacturing factory having the five variety of toys to be manufactured on a multi equipped workstation having assembling facility all the toys have different design and different spare parts the processing time and due dates of different toys are given below determine the sequence of processing according to different sequencing rule so you can see here i will put on the laser pointer for your reference so you can see here there are five types of toys a b c d and e having different processing times and having different due dates so we will try to calculate by different sequencing rule and uh, we will do some calculations about the criteria of sequencing and then we are trying to reach to a conclusion that which sequence should be followed so first sequence you know that first come first serve basis so we have to arrange the jobs as per the order date so it is a b c d e let's say and we have arranged it now you have to add this column the column of flow time you can see here there are only two columns processing time and due date here there are three columns or four columns this column is added so the column name flow time is added to this table now what this column is about it is only the cumulative sum of this column so first there is processing time is 6 so you apply 6 here now for second entry you have to take 6 plus next processing time so 6 plus 2 8 then 8 plus 8 16 16 plus 3 19 19 plus 9 28 in this way we get this column which is called as flow time okay then this column was already there in the question and we will add one more column giving us the job lateness okay so how we will calculate lateness it will be the flow time minus due date so if it is in minus we take zero if it is positive we will give the value to the lateness so see here it is 6 minus 8 it is negative so we take zero it is not getting late 8 minus 6 getting late by 2 days 16 minus 18 again negative 19 minus 15 is 4 28 minus 23 is 5 in this way we get this two columns and uh, speci especially the column of lateness as flow time minus due date okay keep this in mind it is flow time minus due date and if the value is negative we take it as zero now we take the totals of this column for calculation purpose because we are applying measures of effectiveness as you can see on the screen there are three measures of effectiveness number 1 is average completion time number 2 is average number of job in the system number 3 is average lateness of the job now in some questions this lateness word is referred as tardiness t a r d i n e double s tardiness so it is one and the same thing tardiness is lateness so what are the formula formulas are simple for average completion time we will take sum of flow time total divide by number of job we can see here what is the total of my flow time it is 77 so it is 77 upon total number of jobs are 5 so average completion time is 15.4 days then average number of jobs in the system is sum of flow time totals divided by sum of processing time 
so sum of flow time totals is 77 and sum of processing time is 28 so this will give me average number of jobs in the system is 2.75 then how we will calculate the average lateness it is total late days divided by number of jobs so in the last column whatever the lateness we are getting the total of that late days that is 11 divided by number of jobs in the system that is 5 so total average lateness is 2.2 days now these three measures of effectiveness this is for our first sequence that is first come first serve similarly by other sequencing rule we will again find these three parameters for that sequence and finally the comparison or the tabulation of all these uh, values that is measure of effectiveness for different sequencing rules we will get to know and we will try to compare that which type of sequencing is better okay so the next criteria is shortest processing time so as we know we will get back to the table yes this is our table so here we have to arrange our jobs by so shortest processing time what it is shortest is minimum to maximum so minimum is 2 then 3 then 6 8 9 it is 2 3 6 8 9 which means that B D A C E so as per the shortest processing time it is B D A C E so first of all we will arrange the jobs in the sequence of shortest processing time you can see here it is 2 3 6 8 9 again we will follow the same process we will generate the column of flow time how it is accumulative so 2 2 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 6 11 11 plus 8 19 19 plus 9 28 similarly lateness it is 2 minus 6 negative 0 5 minus 15 negative 0 11 minus 8 is 3 19 minus 18 is 1 28 minus 23 is 5 so this is lateness column and these are the total so what is flow time total it is 65 processing time total it is 28 we already know it will be constant for every sequence lateness total is 9 so on the basis of these value again our three measures of effectiveness are calculated so it is flow time total is 65 so 65 upon 5 is 13 days average number of jobs in the system is 65 upon 28 that is 2.32 and average lateness is 9 by 5 that is 1.8 days so these are the values of measures of effectiveness for the sequencing rule of SPT that is shortest processing time next is earliest due date okay now how we will get this by this particular column so the sequence you have to arrange this column due date column in ascending order the sequence will be B A D C E so you arrange the jobs like B A D C E processing time flow time again we will calculate the flow times and this is the scenario and calculations for earliest due date sequence ok so again here the flow time total is 68 lateness is 6 so the calculations for measure of effectiveness is 68 by 5 that is 13.6 days 68 by 28 2.42 jobs and 6 by 5 is 1.2 days average lateness and the last sequence is longest processing time so in shortest processing time we have arranged this column by ascending here you have to uh, arrange it by descending highest to lowest maximum to minimum so the sequence become E C A D B and accordingly we will arrange the jobs we will find the flow time column okay and we will calculate so here the values are obviously more the flow time column is 103 flow time total is 103 processing total is 28 lateness total is 48 because we are 
processing the jobs as per the longest processing time so these are the measures of effectiveness for longest processing time 20.6 days is the average completion time average number of jobs in the system are 3.68 average lateness is 9.6 so now we have tabulated all the results in one table to see what can be concluded out of this so one thing which can be concluded is you have to take the minimum average job lateness because lateness is not a good thing for uh, any industry because lateness this particular job lateness is maxima uh, what we can say magnifies in several operations and then the deadline which was committed to the customer is violated and such violation of deadline in this competitive era is not at all uh, affordable to the company so the sequence which is giving you the minimum average job lateness is a good sequence so what is the good sequence here it is highlighted in orange color it is earliest due date okay now one more thing which we can interpret out of this is apart from lateness see if we can compare the lateness it is but obvious that 1.2 is minimum okay but what about the average completion time here okay and what about the number of jobs in the system this also convey something okay what what it conveys okay and uh, what wha how this particular calculations are beneficial for further operation planning okay the the sequence uh, which is giving you the best result that is the minimum lateness is obviously earliest due date there is no question in it okay but one thing which can be interpreted out of these calculation is this particular value of 13.6 okay now this 13.6 also gives you the input for planning what this in input is about that if you follow the earliest due date average completion time of one product will be 13.6 okay so as compared to the other sequencing technique okay for example if you take if, if you take first come first serve so there the average time is more okay average time means if you have multiple jobs every every job will have a different time because the design and the uh, variety of the product will be different but this average gives me one of the basis for committing the deadline are you getting me okay average completion time means what it is giving me one idea that my one product takes how much time okay so i must uh, go through this calculation while committing the deadline next time to any customer because if i am giving some commitment which is not at all feasible okay some many times it happens in industry that uh, the demand of deadline is very uh, what we can say unfeasible and impossible okay still the company takes the order okay because they cannot say no to the customer okay but at least if the person or the manager is knowing about this rough calculation then at least he can uh, prevent by giving the utmost non possible deadline okay so average completion time ke column se ek humko ek idea milega that how much time my one product irrespective of the variety because this is average time okay obviously some products will take more time than this some products will take lesser time than this but on an average this is the time to complete one job okay so as per the order size i can commit the deadline at least complying to this particular calculation of average completion time okay so thank you that's all for this particular lecture I hope you understand have a nice day